Welcome new and old friends. My name is 242, and today 42 got us four scary stories. There are some really short ones in this one, but I think you'll really enjoy the theme of family secrets. Now, turn off your lights, make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. I just had an energy drink that promised to unleash the beast inside me. Now I can feel it trying to crawl its way out. Hey, don't forget to leave a comment and tell me what you think down below. Am I the asshole for refusing to take part in a stupid family tradition and piss off my entire family? By Sugar Sod. You're probably already thinking that I'm an asshole just from the title alone. I assure you that I am not and just one honest feedback on the situation that has infuriated my entire family. Next week, I am meant to turn 13, so pretty much I'm becoming an adult, and I want to spend the day with my friends. I explained this to my parents, and they gave me a look like I swore at them. They remind me that birthdays are family events, and all of our relations are coming over. They wouldn't listen to me no matter what I told them, and my mother ran out of the room weeping. My father started scolding me and telling me she'd been preparing for my birthday for weeks. He kept reminding me of the tradition that runs in our family for generations. I could see the hatred in his eyes when I told him that I didn't care about this stupid tradition. He immediately grounded me and told me I had no choice but to participate. He then told all of my relatives, and they have all been ringing and texting me nonstop and telling me how horrible of a person I am. Honestly, I would rather just run away for the day than face this stupid tradition. It just seems so stupid for my family to expect me to climb back inside my mother just so we can reenact my birth. I wasn't upset by the fact a vampire was about to kill me. I was upset that no one bothered to tell me how many teeth they actually had. Family Lore by Small Rock Salt Lamp Recently, my mother let my brothers in and I on an old family story from her side. She says the story has been passed down for a couple generations, and that no one yet has been able to contest its accuracy. She told us the story with some reluctancy, especially around my two younger brothers, who are 14 and 16. I will call them Owen and Howie respectively for this story. She knew that this story was haunting enough to keep even a 14-year-old from sleeping. I'm an 18 female, and it had my skin crawling. She told us the story during our recent camping trip. We had reserved a small spot in a scheduled campground near a lake for spring break. On our second night there, we sat around the campfire, and when we ran out of conversation topics, Owen suggested we tell scary stories. After a couple of sarcastic, joking stories, my mom piped up. Did I ever tell you guys the family scary story? My dad immediately gave her a meaningful look and shook his head at her. Of course, this aroused our curiosity. Wait, what is it? Howie said. My dad shook his head even more adamantly. Don't tell them, Carol. It's not worth it. It's not that bad, right? My mom contested. 
What, is it real or something? I don't understand. I said, furrowing my brows at the two of them. My mom sighed. <sighs> we don't know if it's real, but it could very well be. The story that my grandmother passed down to my mother, then to my brother and I. It's kind of gruesome. You guys have been too young to hear it yet, my dad added. I think they're old enough now, my mom said. My dad hesitated, then consented. So my mother began the story, telling it just the way it was told to her. As you know, my grandmother was nicknamed Big Mama, since we called my mother Mama. Because of that, my great-grandmother, Big Mama's mother, was called Other Mama. I barely knew her, only as a little kid. Apparently, Other Mama had three children, but her youngest daughter was always her favorite. Her name was Delilah. She had a special connection to Delilah. So when Delilah contracted pneumonia and her health quickly deteriorated, other mama got really worried. Back in those days, people died of pneumonia much more often because there weren't as many good medicines and doctors. So Delilah continued to get sicker and sicker until one day she died. Other mama was heartbroken. Delilah was buried on the property near the house where Other Mama and the rest of the family lived. Other Mama wanted to keep Delilah close. Eventually, after not too long, Other Mama and the family had to move away to a new house in a new part of the country. Other Mama insisted on taking Delilah's coffin with them and reburying it on the new property because she just couldn't bear to leave the burying place of her favorite daughter behind well, they took off for a different state. So, Delilah's coffin was dug back up again to be moved to the new house. When the coffin had been dug up, Other Mama's curiosity overtook her. She wanted to see her baby girl one more time. She needed to see her. So, she had them open the casket again. Inside was Delilah. But Delilah's mouth was wide open, her eyes were bulging open, and her hands were up in her hair, pulling at it. She was frozen, dead like that. Horror and disgust had silenced my brothers and I for a moment. Why did she look like that? Howie asked, trying to act unbothered. My mother shrugged. Well... You know, back then, they didn't have the machines that we have these days to detect brain waves and brain activity after they think someone has died, so... I realized what she was trying to say, what had happened to Delilah. So you're saying, they thought she was dead and buried her, but she was still alive? My mom paused shifting uncomfortably. Apparently, she was most likely in a small coma when they pronounced her dead. So, she woke up later, underground. No one slept that night. The horror I felt from the story was different from the horror I felt watching a scary movie or reading a ghost story online. There was no reason here for me to believe it wasn't true. And this even happened to my own family. I felt the reality of it in my own veins. That night, I dreamt that I was in the coffin, six feet underground, struggling to breathe, and raised my hand into my hair in a desperate panic. Someone said goodnight to me. And I responded with goodnight and tried to fall asleep. Chills ran down my spine when I realized my parents are out. And I was alone in the house as I can feel long, 
scrawny hands pulling on my blanket slowly. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. My One True Love by Sugar Sewed My husband is possibly the greatest man I have ever met. He has done so much for me and expected so little in return. The best part of my day is waking up next to him every morning. He rescued me from my abusive parents and let me move in with him. At first, our relationship was just platonic, but over time, I slowly fell in love with him. I was the one who made the first move and asked him out on a date. We got married less than a year later and have been living in married bliss ever since. The only problem is my parents keep trying to track me down. We've had to move twice as they've almost found us. This morning, my parents showed up at the door with a couple police officers and dragged the love of my life away. I tried to fight them off, but I was restrained by a female officer. My parents keep trying to tell me that my husband kidnapped me, but I know he wouldn't do something like that. I kept begging the officers to let me see my husband, but they keep refusing. I keep hearing them whisper about something called Stockholm Syndrome. I can't wait for this all to be over. I can't wait for this all to be over so I can continue the rest of my life with the only man I will ever love. My daughter did not win the beauty pageant and was devastated. She wouldn't stop crying while I trade her for a much better little girl at the orphanage. One who was a sure bet to win next year. Please be quiet. Bye, cheeky puns. You have to be quiet. Your grandmother is asleep in the attic, whispered my mother as we crept through the front door. Why is she being so dramatic? I thought to myself. Why did you wait 17 years to tell me I had a grandmother who lived in a creepy old backwoods house? I demanded of her. My mother shushed me and hurriedly ushered me through the house and into the basement. If a surprise road trip to a surprise house with a surprise grandmother was a strange start to my day, the basement just piled on the weird. Beige padded cloth walls, thick red carpet, giant soft couches supporting a mountain of pillows in clashing prints. This place looks like if a porn set from the 70s had terrible taste. How do you know what a porn set from the 70s looks like? Countered my mother. I rolled my eyes. Sometimes I think she believes the internet is a figment of my imagination. This room is soundproofed to prevent us from disturbing and waking your grandmother, she explained. About that, I replied, why didn't I know I still had a grandmother? I thought she was dead. Are there any other family members you're hiding in the hicks? Ignoring my snickery tone, my mother answered, your grandmother, she's special. She's not from here. She was a young orphan ferried over from a world away. No name, no money, and no memory. Her life was really hard growing up. This country can be unforgiving to anyone they see as different. Hearing that, there was a twing of empathy for my grandmother. I've always felt different my entire life, and people could be cruel. 
But then she met your grandfather and it was love at first sight for them both. They got married very young and had me really early. My mother smiled wistfully. We three mostly just had each other this far out, but it was a great childhood. Constantly outdoors helping my mom grow food or helping my dad maintain the house. I had hoped for the same when I had you. It didn't skip my notice that my mother had used mom and dad to refer to my grandparents for the first time. Once I moved to the city, I didn't visit as much, so I never realized. Your grandmother got sicker the older she got, started to lose her sight and smell, had to take long naps. It was a strain on your grandfather, but he insisted on taking care of her himself making me promise to do the same if he died first. So, on the weekends, when you're with your dad, I come over. Clear up the weeds, stock some food, do the laundry. And now that you're old enough, you can help me, she ended. You still haven't explained why you never told me about her, I retorted. No, I didn't. How about we stop at that diner you like on the way home and I tell you the rest over pancakes and bacon? For now, just be really quiet as you walk through the house and stay on the ground floor. You can work outside weed in the garden while I finish up the laundry here. She tossed me a pair of gardening gloves, shooing me away. Maybe if I wasn't such a curious, stubborn brat, things would have gone very differently that day. But a secret grandmother? How many people would be capable of soldering off to yank some weeds with a mystery like that left unsolved? Determined to meet her, I headed up to the attic. For an old house, nothing creaked. Climbing the stairs was silent, the carpet dampening my footfalls. As I stood in the entryway to the attic, I struggled to get a clear look at the sleeping form on the bed, the hazy light weakening quickly with the setting sun. Screw it, I thought. Grandma? I said, barely above a whisper. She didn't move. I took a step forward. Grandma? I said loudly. At first, nothing stirred. Then the whisper of sheets being slid from a body. A creak of joints as the figure on the bed sat up straight, head swiveling side to side in the deepening shadows. A hush groan escaped her as her feet touched the floor, followed by a rasp throttle as my grandmother hunched over on all fours. Her bones creaked and bent and warped, each arm and each leg at opposite angles of each other, while her head gradually began twisting around to find the source of the noise. With each jerky twist of her head, I felt myself sink deeper and deeper into myself, praying she didn't see me, praying that I could be quiet enough to be invisible. When her head had turned completely around, Her eyes locked onto mine. No flicker of humanity shone in those primal depths. They were deeper and darker than the infinity night sky. I didn't scream. I didn't cry. I barely breathed. She inched spasmatically towards me, the direction of the last sound she heard. Closer and closer. I didn't feel the tickle of urine run down my leg. Closer and closer, a scream started to crawl up the back of my throat. Closer and closer. Then she was close enough to smell wet, putrid earth underlaid by hints of lavender, mixed with the coppery tang of fritted blood. I nearly broke, but was saved by a loud bang from outside, a hunter's gunshot perhaps, or a car backfiring on a distant road. It jolted my grandmother to action. She opened her mouth in a silent shriek, 
almost like the sound had physically hurt her in some way, and bolted to the window, shattering the glass as she jumped through it in pursuit of the source of the noise. It felt like an eternity before I could force myself to move again. When my limbs finally moved, I ran to the basement, hurtling into my mother's arm and sobbing uncontrollably. She held and soothed me like I was five, not seventeen, rocking me in her arms. I told her what happened. I told her how sorry I was I didn't listen to her, that I thought I knew better. It's okay, little lamb, she said, reverting to my childhood nickname. Do you think I wasn't an obnoxious teenager at one point, too? The same thing happened to me when I first came back home. But luckily, your grandfather was around to befuddle her senses. She wouldn't really hurt kin, he told me then. But he also sounded very uncertain when he said it. However, Grandpa did teach me how to track her and put her back to sleep. And now it's your turn to learn. It'll be hard. She has a really big head start, so we better get hunting. Mom told me this was our family secret, our family curse, and not to tell a soul. But I'm disobeying her again to tell this story, to warn everyone. Whoever you are, wherever you are, please be quiet. My grandmother is awake, and I don't know where she is. Nobody blinded me! Nobody! He screamed as blood trickled out from between his fingers. And nobody will ever help him. Not after I lied about my name on the night we met. I do hope you enjoyed these tales this evening. If you liked it, Hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications. If you'd like to help this channel, share this video with anyone who might enjoy it. If you'd like to help in other ways, I do have a Patreon and merch. All the links are in the tree link in the description box. Also, leave a comment, but first, let me get you that Sunday word. On to our Sunday word. Last week's word was integrity, and it seems no one liked that word, so I got nothing for it. So if you would like to do this week with integrity and the other Sunday word, that'd be great. This Sunday word is control. C-O-N-T-R-O-L, which means the power to influence or direct people's behavior or the course of events or a group or individuals use as a standard of comparison to check the results of a survey or experiment. So, if you would like to use this Sunday word, you can leave me a comment down below if you're on YouTube, and if you're on my Patreon, go to my Twitter and at me and use this Sunday word as well. But as always guys, thank you for just watching and listening. It really means the world to me. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite.